Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. This one comes as a follow up to the camera rig tutorial which I've done before. I've had a few people ask me about what's the cleanest and best way for linking up the focal distance control. So this one is just a quick tutorial on linking up the focal distance and then how to use it in a shot and I've also, if you wait around to the end, I've also got a special little treat for one special tool I use that makes the whole thing work really cleanly. All right, let's have a look. So here we are inside Maya with my half-made rig. If we can see here, I've got all my controls linked together with my uh, empty seats. They're all uh, empty groups. They're all set in here at zero as well. So this is a very base rig to start off with. So like I said, the main things which I'm gonna do, this is all covered, all, all the reasons I've set this up with the extra nodes, this is all covered in the camera rig tutorial, which I'll have a link in the description if you wanna see through that. But all I'm doing in here is wanting to link up the focal distance, which we've got here, to a control so you can see where it is and then actually constrain that point to a character so if a character's moving you can actually keep him in focus so let's do that the thing i use for that is just create a locator if we bang a locator in at zero there we go that's a group that's a great start and we can call this uh foc foc distance disc control so the thing that comes off by default to start off with, if you check out your camera control here, you can see that your focal distance right over here is already set at five. Just by default, it's set at five. So let's actually grab our locator control and just set our translate off to five. And you notice something really interesting happens straight off to the start. The five is in the other direction of Z axis which is not much use for us if we're wanting to use that as a control point. It means that all our numbers are gonna be backwards, you know, to actually get it to work straight off with nothing in it. You put it to minus five, yes, there it is, it works. But then all our numbers for this are backwards. So you could use an expression or an equation to do that, but I'm gonna use a different way of doing it. I'm just gonna show you a really neat way of doing this. First thing I'm gonna do is grab it and then go control G which gives me a group. So you can see now that my low, my distance is in a group. And then I'm going to call this fuck extra. Now this group, what I'm going to do with all these controls then is I'm going to want them I'm going to want them to follow all my other controls because I don't want them to be independent. I just want them to be independent of the camera. So I'm just going to grab this little group here and I'm going to drag and drop it into my extra group above the camera. What I'm also going to do is you can see the control is still facing the wrong way, but inside the extra group node, I'm actually going to rotate it 180 degrees. 180, boom. Now you can see the control is actually in front of the camera, which is where you want your control to be. So with that, uh, basically this extra node then, I'm not going to want to do anything else to that. It's got everything I want in it. I'm actually going to grab all of that so no one can muck these up and I'm going to lock and hide them. Lock and hide selection. So all I can see in that group is visibility. Don't even need that. All right. So hopefully with that all constrained there, I can grab my control and that group is just, that locator is just going to sit in front of the camera all the time. Z axis straight out. So I should be able to grab the Z axis and just go translate Z and go in and out. No matter what direction this is facing. Beautiful. All right, so far so good. So my control rig positioning is now set up. Remember it would needed to be five, so back to five. Now the simple thing, the simplest way of getting these two connected, which I use, uh, I prefer, is just to grab the control and under edit you can find connection editor and it brings up this little control uh, this little menu now what this is it just gives you direct access one-to-one -one connection if you want to drive something one-to-one -one, which is why I've put that extra group in there to make sure that the locator is actually directly in front of the camera 
and also already offset at a focal distance of five. So what I want on my reload right or my output side from the locator, I'm going to want to grab my down along here, translate Z axis, which is what we work what we worked out before. And I'm going to want the output of that, which is the distance, to be put into the cameras. I'm actually going to go into the attribute editor and select it from here. So I make sure I get the focal distance, select that and reload right. So now that's going to highlight everything that I can actually put it into translate Z. It just shows everything I can put it into. So I'm going to go down to all right, scroll down until I find well, focal length. Now I don't want focal length because that's your lens length. What you want is focal distance. You just click on that. You can see it's now yellow and it's connected. So what I should be able to do with that connected, I can then close it down. Should be able to grab my locator and zip it off in a fanciful direction. Translate Z, whoosh, off is to wherever it's going. And my camera focal distance should now have adjusted as well, which it has. For, neat, for cleanliness and tidiness, I'd also then grab these and just hide them. Uh, hide selected. There is options in here. It depends on your pipeline and your TD they, or what you want to do. You might also want to get rid of your Y and Z so you can't throw that off. But um, it also means then you can't link it or move it that way. I more often than not leave it there just for me it's a personal preference to have it so I've got access to it and I can see it but if you want to script it out or lock it so that you can't actually pull it off center that's another really good piece to lock but there you go that's the camera rig now set up and I'd save it ready for reference so now how do we use that in a scene to lock it to something well I'm just going to go straight off the bat to go file reference because I always reference in my um, cameras. I'm going to grab my reference, my camera reference, my cam rig. There it is. There it is. My camera rig is now in place. So I've got all my nodes. Boom, boom, da, da, da. And I should have down in zero my camera rig as well. Let's just show cameras so I can see the camera. There it is. I've got my animation here, which I want to follow. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. He's running across the city as fast as he fast. Run, run, run as fast as you can. Can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. And for whatever reason, the director has kind of said, you know what? I want him to run towards it and I want to keep his face in focus the whole distance. Yeah, you know, all right. Sounds like a plan to me. So let's line it up so we can see him. Let's have a look through. I usually go through my camera. I have two panels open and let's have a look through that camera. Camera rig, camera one. Oh, it's all blurry. That's no good. That's not what we're after. I also might want to oh, change the... Change the lens on this as well to go out to a 50 or an 80. Let's go to an 80 and see what it looks like. There it is. It's going to be too big. So let's go to a 60. Let's go to a 60. Line him up, dead center a shot. There we go. But we can see he's still blurry, which is fine, because what we can do, we can go in and grab our, I'm gonna have to show my locators so I can see it. Locator, grab that for him, and just snap a line it to his eyes. Now there's two things I can do here. Number one is I could just animate this. I could put like a key there at the start of his run, key selected, and then he can run all the way up to wherever I lose him. I'm gonna have to animate a little bit of the camera moving here, I reckon, rotating as he goes past, which is gonna be annoying, but let's do that. Let's go, boom, rotate. Just do a rotate that way. Have a look at what as he comes in. 
might want to put a key in about here somewhere. Nah. Uh, I moved my camera, didn't I? That's no good. Get rid of that. <sighs> Drop a key in about frame 80. Just so we're keeping him center. And you can see that he's blurry again. Now I'll just keep him as he keeps running. Nice, 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 nice. Can have a quick look at those curves, make sure that that's just going straight off to start off with. And then he's got a nice curve there, beautiful. And this should just be a happy little runs through. But as you can see, he doesn't stay in focus. The focus stays wherever it is. So the first, first thing he could do is just hand key that, going key in, you know, key halfway through, key halfway through and you could get some nice a pretty straightforward approach just with that but the thing I'm going to do with this controller since I've got the locator down the end here and my director's gone and said okay we're going to have a real narrow depth of field with this um, we're going to stay right on his eyes and we need to stay right on his eyes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break connection uh, just so it's not keyed and I'm going to grab grab something that's like right on his eye like that that so it's there grab his eye there right in the middle of his eye grab his eye constraint and I'm going to put a constraint on it animation constraint now I'm just going to put a point constraint on it because all I want to constrain is the z-axis i don't need to constrain everything else because the only thing that's driving that uh focal depth is z so i'm just going to track a drop a z constraint on it apply that you can see it's now constrained to that so as we have a look through our camera we can just make sure that we grab that You can see that the focal distance there, as we grab the camera, you can see the focal distance is 131. As it runs along, you can see that it's changing focus as he runs to being right in front of us. You can see that that is still clearly in focus right on his eyes. And then as he turns and starts going past again, that distance is then still constrained perfectly to him. So that works fine if it's for one character. But what if you're tracking an object that's getting passed from hand to hand and you're trying to kind of get really complicated with your linking system that comes along with it just to go, oh my God, we've got so many constraints we're turning on and off and it's just really, really hard to go with your long list of constraints. This is my secret tip for the day. Um, if you've ever seen the ZV Parent Master, definitely check it out. It is a brilliant tool. You can find it online. Brilliant little tool that makes linking and constraining over time so much cleaner and easier to try and handle than what's down here. You can find it online uh, from the ZV Parent Master up to Master 1.3. Yeah, highly recommend the ZV Parent Master into your pipeline. It's a brilliant little tool for linking and complex animation. Um, don't try putting it into a pipeline halfway through. It does need a little bit of a setup and it does add extra groups into your hierarchy. But once they're all set up, my God, it works a dream and it's clean and it can be passed through a pipeline without losing any linking constraints. Very nice. So there you have it. Hope you found this tutorial at least a little bit helpful. I really want to thank Andrew Silk for giving me my little character, Zanzi. Definitely check out his website, um, Create CG Characters. Great course for anyone who's actually looking at getting into modeling and rigging. Brilliant set of tools as well with the, with the Zoo Toolkit. But definitely check both of them out. They'll be stuck down in my list of brilliant things as well. 
If there is anything else in the previs world that you'd really like me to run through, please hit me up, leave me comments. I'm quite happy to talk about previs, layout, and the animation industry as a whole. Please leave a like and subscribe. And until the next time, I'll say bye bye.